what's up people uh, here I am going to review the Danby designer DPAC 12068 portable air conditioner that's this device right here and it is actually running right now because it is hot outside so with these kind of units you want to look for a couple of things you want to make sure that they fit in the window correctly which this one actually does this is actually a uh, horizontally you slide it open and close you slide it open and close this way as opposed to this way and because of that I couldn't find a good window air conditioner so I resorted to one of these portable air conditioners and I ended up choosing this one which actually this one's kinda big this one as you can see here is not a small unit the thing actually weighs I think a little over a hundred pounds and um, actually it ends right about here this part right here is a water tank and you want to have that external water tank attached um, pretty much all the time especially if you live in any kind of humid environment because the, the, the water tank that's in the unit will fill up in two seconds and it will shut off and you won't, you won't be able to have any air conditioning going on so you want to have that water tank attached so it pretty much extends the length of the unit so it's pretty large um, this one is rated at 12,000 BTU which may seem kind of high for such a small room like a bedroom like this one but it actually when it comes to portable air conditioners they say that you should have a higher BTU than what you think and the reason why is because these are a little less efficient than the window models and so you can go with a lower BTU window model and you, you're going to want to stick with a higher BTU when it comes to these portable models now for, as far as the buttons and all that go the buttons are right here really easy to access power button mode button so you can switch between air conditioning um, dry which is dehumidify and then just fan if you just want to use the fan without air conditioning which I don't know I guess that could be helpful sometimes it will save money but um, then you could just buy a fan if you just want to do that so and then um, there's three fan speeds you can use this button here there's just a you know a low actually there's four there's automatic supposedly and then there's a low a medium and a high um, I don't really like automatic I like to choose my fan speeds I don't think it's very complicated when there's only three fan speeds so I like to do that on my own and then there's a button here this is the oscillation button as you can see here these are the vents and these vents in here can move back and forth they can oscillate to uh, you know like an oscillating fan so that's the idea behind that you can press that button it'll start oscillating the buttons over here are all like navigation buttons to set things like the clock and the other buttons on the very far side are actually just to tell the machine to come on at a certain time or tell it to turn off at a certain time so that's really helpful you can actually do both you can you can set the machine to come on at like 5 p.m and shut off automatically at 11 p.m. or something like that or you, or you can do one or the other so that's helpful so when you're at work and you know it's going to be hot you can have it come on two hours before you get home or something like that it's great so um, yeah I'm, I'm actually really happy with the machine it does do a very good job for um, the size of the room and it does it does what it says it keeps going and there's really not too much maintenance you have to do there's a filter back here you slide this thing out you have to, you have to vacuum it off clean it or whatever um, and then there's also there's a couple I guess you could call them filters in here in the intake and all that is you pull that out and it's just like a metal grill basically to prevent things like bugs and, and uh, you know environmental dirt and stuff from getting into the machine so but I actually have a, uh, a screen up here in front of the intake and the and the uh, exhaust so bugs can't get in here anyway now a little word about the window basically there's two pieces to this there is a slider that comes in here and you slide out the other piece up in the rest of the window and you can see this dark area right here that's the, where the slider is behind my blinds however the slider is uh, set size and in my case the slider was actually too long so I had to cut the slider to a specific size of this window so that way I could slide it out and it will you'll cover just the window and it won't go up too high because you can't fit it in there if it goes up too high 
And so that slider basically just needs to stay in there because if you didn't have the slider, this area of the window would be exposed. And, you know, if you didn't have a screen, bugs could get in. Even if you do have a screen, the air is going to get out. It's just not good. So you need to have that there to kind of seal, seal it up up there. And then you can see another issue that came up. And because of this thing's, the way it's built and because of the way uh, the blinds work, the blinds actually conflict with it. And so I had to get these, uh, these drapes and kind of hang them down. Because if I didn't have the drapes there, then the window would just be, you know, indefinitely exposed. I wouldn't be able to close the window, I mean, or block off the, the sun, you know, or have any privacy or anything like that. And it's actually very important because if you have sun coming in here, it's going to heat the room up even more. It's going to be harder on the air conditioner, and the, the room's just going to end up being hotter. So you want to have some some uh, blinds like that or some drapes or whatever. You're going to have to you can do a little bit of work, improvise if you have this kind of window. And, you know, but eventually you'll, you'll get it, and this, this thing will work out great. So as in, anyway, as I said, it's kind of on the heavy side. It's a big, big unit. It doesn't look too ugly or anything. I mean, I guess that's objective, so you can decide. But um, I'm happy with it, and that's pretty much all I have to say. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot one thing. The unit also comes with a remote control. I don't like the remote control. I'll show it to you right now. This is it. I don't like this thing. The reason why is because if I hit this power button right here, it, it'll turn on. I don't even know what it'll do, actually. It, it, it's really unreliable. If you, you hit the power button, it turns on, and it do, kind of does whatever it wants. Like, I hit it before, and it came on in auto, and it started just kind of oscillating. I think that's kind of stupid. It, when you turn it on with the actual unit like this, it remembers your previous setting, so you just turn it on. Simple. If you turn it on with this thing, it's going to do pretty much whatever it wants. And um, the other thing, too, is I'm in a bedroom here. I really don't need a remote control. I'll just walk the two feet to go and touch the buttons because I'd rather have it work out right than have to use the remote control and then end up coming over here and touch the buttons anyway because the remote control screwed the settings up. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't really know what's up with this thing, but you, it, it just doesn't work out for me. So uh, you could mess with it if you want. But if I had one complaint about this device, it would be the way that the remote control is set up. Anyway, so that's my review of the Danby Designer DPAC 12068 Portable Air Conditioner. Thank you.